A hugely important redox reaction is between thiosulfate and iodine. I cannot stress this enough because it pops up in, you know, just standard questions and equations, but equally titrations as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the two half equations involved in this reaction, and then we can come up with the overall equation. First half equation is S4O6 2 minus plus two electrons, and that gives us two S2O3 two minus. S2O3 two minus, of course, being our thiosulfate that actually gets involved in the reaction. We know that the title's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? But that reacts with half I2 plus an electron gives I minus. Of course, these are both dynamic equilibria. Our E0 values, as standard, I've put the most negative on top. So that's plus 0 0.08 for our uh, thiosulfate half equation and plus 0 0.54 for iodine iodide half equation. Of course, you know I'm a big fan of the anti-clockwise rule now. So at the top, we're going from right to left. That's oxidation. So our S2O3 2 minus loses two electrons to form S4O6 2 minus. And at the bottom, we've got reduction, iodine going to iodide. So the overall equation here is 2S2O3 2 minus plus a full I2. Why is it a full I2? Because I've had to double everything in that half equation to get the two electrons I need uh, to balance that equation out, okay? So 2S2O3 2 minus plus I2 gives us S4O6 2 minus and two iodide ions. That is the full equation for this redox reaction. Now I mentioned that this is a very common subject for a redox titration. For that reason, starch is used as an indicator for those titrations. Now, iodine, I mean, the, the thiosulfate and the s 6 2 minus, I mean, they're, they're colorless, okay? But the iodine is brown. But the thing is, we use starch as an indicator because that's a more kind of like a clearer color change for us. So iodine forms a blue-black complex with starch, okay? Now, that color... Okay, if you put some starch into your uh, conical flash during the titration, well, that would disappear at the end point. So at the point where all that iodine has been used up, you know, there's no iodine left, then that blue-black color will have disappeared. Okay, so starch is used as an indicator. It indicates when all the iodine has run out. Now, this is used most of the time, not directly, just to find how much iodine you've got. Okay, it's actually used... And uh, it's like piggybacking another reaction, okay? It's known as iodometry. So a really important application of this, like I said, is iodometry. And iodometry, broadly speaking, is the use of iodine to find the number of moles of another substance. So let's say, you know, you used iodine to react with some copper. You want to find out how much copper you've got, okay? Copper 2 plus will react with iodide, to form iodine. Now, once you know how much, you know, once you've formed your iodine, you can use this equation, this redox reaction at the top to find out how much iodine you've got in that solution. If you know how much iodine you've got, then you can work backwards and find out how much copper you've got. So there's two reactions, two redox reactions going on here. One, a metal, you know, reacting with iodide to form iodine. And then this reaction to find out how many moles of iodine we've got. So we can work backwards and find out how many moles of metal we've got. Let me talk through one with you. Let's say this is the most common one. Let's say we wanted to find the number of moles of Cu2 plus in solution. So we've got a copper salt. We want to know how many moles of copper we've got in there. Well, the first thing we do is react that copper solution, the known volume of that copper solution with excess iodide ions. Why do we use excess iodide ions? We want to make sure that all of those copper two pluses have been reduced. Okay, so we put a load of iodide ions in, maybe potassium iodide, and then that iodide is actually oxidized to iodine by the copper two plus. In terms of an equation, this is what's happening. Two Cu two plus plus four I minus gives us two CuI and I two. Mustn't forget to put the two in there. So two Cu two plus plus four I minus gives us two CuI and I two. So that's our initial reaction. It's almost like a back titration. This so we flood it with iodide ions, and you know we've got iodine being made here. Okay, now we can use this iodine in the equation at the top. After that initial reaction, then the number of moles of iodine that we've just produced is found using the titration with S2O3 2 minus, like what we've just described above, using the starch and so on and so forth. So that reaction there is, as we've written at the top, 2S2O3 2 minus 
plus iodine gives S4O6 two minus and two iodide ions. Now what we can do is we can work backwards. Once we've done this titration, if we know the number of moles of S2O3 that we've used coming out of our burette, okay, then we know by stoichiometry how many moles of iodine is present in our conical flask. Now, if we know how many moles of iodine is present, then that's how many moles of iodine were produced in this initial reaction. And therefore, through stoichiometry, we can find how many moles of Cu2 plus we've got. So this is like, like I said, a back titration. Working backwards then, we can use stoichiometry to find the number of moles of Cu2 plus in our original initial solution from that first reaction. So stoichiometry, you know, we'll be looking at, you know, the number of moles of S2O3 2 minus relative to the number of moles of iodine that are reacted with, and then that number of moles of iodine relative to the number of moles of Cu2 plus, okay? But let me give you a shortcut. Two moles of S2O3 react with one mole of iodine, okay? Now, if we go back over here, if we look at the stoichiometry between iodine and Cu2+, plus, one mole of iodine was produced using two moles of Cu2+. Plus. So we've got a two to one to two ratio, okay? What we can say here is if you know the number of moles of S2O3 2 minus, that basically equals the number of moles of Cu2 plus because you're going from two to one, one to two. So you can just you know cut out the middleman here, okay? So that is what we're gonna get with this back titration using iodometry. So this redox reaction between thiosulfate and iodine, really important, okay? Not so much for the reaction itself, but what it can do to help us find, you know, for example, the number of moles of copper two plus in solution using this process known as iodometry.